Hi friends, it's Lauren Taylor. Thanks for joining me in my craft room today. It's pretty much the 25th of the month. It's a little day early, but I was so excited that I was gifted the Trinity Stamps Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber collaboration. This adorable set is called a Little Christmas Tree and I just really wanted to use it for my Christmas video this month, but it is out today, September 24th, 2024. So I wanted to get my video out so you could see the stamps in action and hopefully snag this set for yourself before it sells out. So I was gifted the stamp set. I didn't get the dies, which is fine. Um, but I wanted to show how you can mask to put the cute little angel on top of the tree. You could also do masking for the ornaments and the gifts under the tree as well. But I wanted to keep it just really simple and do this really sweet angel. I grew up with putting an angel on the top of my tree that looked very similar to this. So I was just really excited to create a Christmas card with this angel on top. So I'm starting with my angel stamp set inside of my Misty and I have some alcohol marker friendly white cardstock and I stamped the angel first because you always want to stamp what is going to be in the front of your images. Um, so I wanted my angel to be on top of the tree so the front of the angel is in front of the top of the tree. So I stamped that first and then I stamped it again on a post-it note on the sticky side of the post-it note and I just trimmed where I know the dress of the angel is going to overlap the tree. So I just cut that part out and put that on as a mask of the angel that I stamped. Once I have that in place, I went ahead and added my tree onto my Misty platform and I stamped my tree with alcohol marker friendly black ink. The same with the angel. I am using blackout detail ink from Ink on 3. Um, and I did have to stamp a couple times because I really need to re-ink my ink pad. Uh, but that's the great thing about the Misty is that I can stamp it, you know, a couple times to make sure I have nice clean lines. So I have a really bold outline of my image. For coloring today, I'm going to use my Olo markers and I have this plaid piece of pattern paper in my stash. It's from Lawn Fawn. It's retired probably been retired for a while, but I wanted to use the colors to inspire my Christmas tree. I just thought that the green, blue, and gold was a little bit non-traditional, but still had a very holiday feel. So for the tree, I'm using BGs. I'm using 2.7 to be the darkest color. And I showed you how I did the very top of the tree, but I only used three shades of this blue-green color. And the bottom has a lot more like area. It's a fuller part of the tree to color. So I do use four shades of BG. So again, 2.7 is the darkest color. And I'm adding a lot of that because I want my tree to be very vibrant and deep. Um, but once I flick on and, you know, layer all of that color, I'm going to bring in 2.4 BG 2.4 as my darker medium color. I usually try to stick to two to three colors, but like I said, there's a lot of area on this part of the tree. So I'm gonna bring in four shades total. So I've added my darkest one. Here I am kind of flicking and adding my first medium tone. And even just with these two alone, I think the tree looks really nice. But for the next color, I'm going to bring in BG 2.3, and I'm going to fill in mostly all of the, I guess technically they're pine needles, but the leaves of my tree, the shape of my tree. And then the last color is BG 2.1, and I'll completely cover again, doing my best just to blend everything together and getting that color into any white areas that I have left over in my tree. So that's what I did to color in all of the greenery part. Again, it's a more kind of tealy blue green color to match my pattern paper, but I still think it looks very much like an evergreen tree. For the garland, I'm going to match the yellow of the paper. So I wanted to give it a golden yellow feel. So I started with YO 2.7 as the darkest shade. And then I'm going to do four again, um, just because there's four in this collection that go really well together. So I did YO 2.5 as the darker midtone, 
YO 2.3 as the lighter mid-tone, and then finally YO 2.2 to finish uh, blending in all of those yellows again to give it a golden yellow feel. And that's the same color that I'll use for the wings of my angel and then also kind of the decorative edge of my tree skirt. But I'm just going to show you the wings here and then we'll move on to using blue for the rest of the tree skirt. So for this I'm going to use only two tones. I'm going to use B4.7 and B4.6 and that's because I'm trying to match that kind of darker blue in the plaid pattern paper. So to keep it darker, I'm just going to use these two shades, which keep it really simple. There's a lot of detail in the tree, and that's where I want the focus to be anyway. So just having two shades for the tree skirt is um, fine with me and also helps me get this coloring done faster. I was kind of over it by finishing the tree. I wish I would have done um, something a little simpler, but I think it looks really nice. For the trunk, I'm going to use some OR, which are brand so starting with 7.6 and 7.4 and this is a really small area of the tree so I'm just going to go back to that 7.6 and add in the details but those are the only two shades that I'll use and it's the same color that I'm going to use for my angel's hair so again OR 7.6 7.4 and then I'll go back again with the darker tone just to add a little bit more shadow for my angel's face, I'm going to do OR 7.2 and I'm going to do her neck and hands as well. And I just did one tone because it's so small. And then for the um, angel dress, I did CG 0 just to add a little bit of shadow. Now I'm going to go back with the darkest of every shade of color that I did. So I'm bringing in BG 2.7 and I'm just adding some stippling dots around my tree. And then I will bring in the darker shade of the blue. Sorry, this is a bit off camera uh, to do the tree skirt. And then I'll bring in the darkest yellow and add that to my garland as well as the tree skirt and my angel's wings. And then finally the brown just for a little bit on the trunk and the angel's hair. And that's just to give it some fun interest, add something to the coloring. I don't, I've seen a lot of my other crafty friends do it and I love it. So I just emulate their style. I'm going to use my scissors to fussy cut out my tree with the angel. Like I said, there is a coordinating die set for this release, but um, I'm decided to just fussy cut it out since I didn't receive it and I did masking with the angel. After I was done cutting it out, I did use my white jelly roll pen to add some highlights throughout the tree. Now I'm going to start building the rest of my card. So I'm taking this plaid piece and I'm cutting it to four and a quarter by four inches. I'm also going to cut a piece of this blue cardstock to a quarter inch by four and a quarter. So that way I have um, my pattern paper at the bottom of my card base and then this little strip of solid cardstock to break up and just add a um, like a line between my white card base and the pattern paper. So I have a top folding white card base out of some sturdy Nina cardstock. I know that I do want to add the plaid paper to the bottom and again have that blue strip of paper kind of break in between the two. And I know I want my tree a little bit to the left because I'm going to stamp a sentiment, but I thought it'd be fun to add kind of a glow behind the angel. So I'm Figuring out the placement, making sure I know exactly where I need to add the glow, and I'm going to be using Slippery When Wet Simon Hurley Lunar, Lunar Paste from Ranger Ink. So I'm using my grid to kind of guide where I know I need my glow to be, and I'm just going to dab my finger in the Lunar Paste and just go in a circular motion and add the paste to the card. So I'm going to go around and around and just increase the size of this gold. You can see it's a big jump there, but I keep putting the paper and my tree and just making sure that 
it's going to fill in behind my angel. So it got bigger and bigger because I was not centered where I wanted it to be. So it uh, definitely increased in size, but it still, I think, looks really good at the end, even though it was a lot larger than I was originally intended. I just wanted it to be behind the angel, but it's behind the angel and the top of the tree. Once I was happy with how much I finally got onto the card and it looked centered behind my angel, I just put a little bit on my glass board here and I'm going to add water and use a brush and I'm holding my brush weird because I have lunar paste all over my fingers and I'm using it to just flick on some, uh, kind of looks like watercolor basically, uh, just adding some metallic splatter to the card. I went ahead and washed my hands and then cleaned up my table. Now lunar paste does dry fairly quickly and is still a little warm uh, right now in Southern California, but it does dry if you don't have it too thick. So definitely don't have a very thick layer. It's, um, I use my finger again to blend it on. So it's a pretty thin layer of lunar paste. So it does dry pretty quickly, which is nice. So while it's drying, I'm gonna add that blue strip of cardstock to the top of my pattern paper. And you can see there I'm touching it and nothing is really rubbing off. There was a little bit, but I think it was the wet spot that I had from my splatter. So I know that I can go ahead and attach this pattern paper to my card base and I shouldn't have any issues. So I'm using my tape runner on the back and I'll go ahead and add that to the front of my A2 card. When I'm looking at it, it actually looks kind of like a present. <laughs> it looks like pattern paper with a bow on top, um, like the top of a box or something. So I think it looks really cool and feels very, you know, like it's a gift for my Christmas tree. So I'm happy with how it's going, but let's get that sentiment added. I realized I probably should have done this before I glued everything on, but at least I don't have my tree attached to the card base yet. So I'll go ahead and grab my Misty again, and I'm going to get my card base into the stamping platform. And I'm going to use 4U because it just fits a little nicer where I want it to go on the card. And once I have it straight and in place, I'm going to use my Twilight Versafine Clear ink pad. I thought it matched pretty well with the blue on the card. And I'll stamp that twice thanks to the you know magic of the Misty being able to stamp more than once. So I have a nice clean sentiment um, stamp impression. Once I've put, you know, clean to put my stamp away, I can finally finish my card here by adding some foam adhesive to the back of my Christmas tree. This is a quarter inch roll and it's one millimeter thick, so it won't be too thick on my card. After I get enough foam on the back, I pulled off the release paper and I'm going to do my best to get this onto my card so that it's straight and also centers my little angel with the glow that I created with the lunar paste. After that, I was looking at my tree and I wanted to bring in more blue. And since I didn't do any ornaments, I thought I could bring in some pops of color. This is in the color Deep Sea and it's a pearl pops. And I'm just going to add a few around the tree where there's bigger open areas. And I thought it, you know, brought in that ornament look, but it was a pearl kind of shiny look to them because it's a pops of color rather than stamping and coloring and adding the images. And I really liked that I did this. I just think it adds more of that blue to the card and a little bit more texture and fun because it's a you know, liquid embellishment on my Christmas tree. So here's a final look at how my Christmas tree turned out. A big thank you to Trinity Stamps and Simon Says Stamp for sending me this collaboration stamp set. It was super fun to work with. I love, love, love Trinity Stamps images. Uh, so I'm really happy with how this holiday card turned out. You'll have to let me know if you were able to snag this stamp set and um, what you want to see in a future Christmas video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll click like, and if you're new here, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. As always, you can find everything I use down below in the description box. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Bye.